Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about adding MVC to our project. Now if you don't know what MVC is yet, don't worry, we'll talk about it in great detail a little bit later on in this series. But for right now I need to actually show you how to add MVC to our project since up to this point we've really only set up an ASP.NET Core blank project. There's really nothing in it. Now in the last video, we talked about middleware. And at the end of that video, I was hinting that part of MVC, the installation process, is adding MVC to that middleware pipeline. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do in this video. We're gonna add MVC to that pipeline. But in order to do that, we need to follow three steps. First, we need to add MVC to our references for the project. Then, we need to add MVC to the services. And we haven't talked about services up to this point, but you can think of them as preliminary services that are prerequisites that some pieces of middleware may need to use throughout the course of the project. We will need to add services that help support the MVC framework in order for MVC to work properly. And I'll show you the code that does that. Then finally, we're going to add MVC to the middleware pipeline which should be a fairly familiar process to you since we already kind of talked about that in the last video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at a demo. So here we are back at our startup class. And the first thing that we need to do is go out and download the MVC NuGet package. And there are two ways that you can do this. The first and most common way is to simply go over here to the Contoso project, right click on it, and select Manage NuGet Packages. Then from here under the Browse tab, I can type in MVC and do a search for MVC and we'll see Microsoft.ASP.NET.MVC comes up. But you may also have the latest version showing version five. At the time of this video, the version six has not yet been released as a stable version. It's still in release candidate. And because of that, you need to select this include pre-releases checkbox. Once you do that, now you can see Microsoft ASP.NET MVC shows version 6.00 release candidate one final. So that's sometimes you may have to go out and get a pre-release version of this if at the time of that you're watching this video, it hasn't already been released as a stable product yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and select from this dropdown, you can see there are the different beta versions that were available and the current pre-release is release candidate one final. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and then click install. And of course, okay, and I accept. And you can see in the upper right hand corner here, restoring packages. So once again, our project has gone out and automatically downloaded the required uh, packages for our project. So to make sure that we got the installation right here, if you go under preferences, you'll see that there's .NET X451, that's for .NET 4.5.1, but we're actually interested in this DNX Core 5. That's the version that we want to operate under. So I'm gonna expand this out and you can see underneath the list of references here for .NET Core that Microsoft.ASP.NET.MVC 6.0.0 uh, or release candidate one final. So that's how you can tell that the classes have all been installed into your project and now are available for you to reference. But now I wanna show you another way that you can go ahead and install this ASP.NET MVC 6. And I think this is really cool. This is new and uh, I really find it very handy and easy to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and uninstall uh, MVC 6 first so that we can do this properly. And you can see once again, restoring packages kind of popped up and that removed the references to ASP.NET MVC from our list of uh, .NET Core 5 references. So I'm gonna go ahead and close our NuGet package manager and I'm just gonna hide this window here. And what they've done in .NET Core is that now if you look at the project JSON file, if I open this up, you can see here are the list of dependencies. Uh, so a dependencies list here, 
has right now the ASP.NET diagnostics, which we saw in the previous video. We have IIS platform handler, and we have this Kestrel server. I'm going to go ahead and right above the diagnostics, I'm going to put in Microsoft dot ASP.NET MVC. And you can see that it adds the colon right after that and gives us IntelliSense that shows us what the different versions of MVC are that we could get for our project all the way to 3.0. Now 3.0 would not work in core, but this latest version 6.0.0 release candidate one final is the one that we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and put a comma after it so that uh, everything works on the compiler. And as soon as I save this project JSON, you'll see once again, the little banner in the upper right hand corner here says restoring packages. So it goes out and downloads the ASP.NET MVC uh, NuGet package for us. And all we had to do is just use the IntelliSense that comes within the project.json file. So I'm gonna go ahead and close project.json. Let's go back to our startup class. Now here in our startup class, we're going to need to add MVC services to our project. And similar to how we configured our application using the configure met uh, uh, method here with the app object, the services are very similar. We're going to use the object that's being passed in here as a parameter. So we're gonna type in services. And just like with the app object, we can do dot and we'll see that a good chunk of our extension methods now begin with the keyword of add. So we have add data protection, add instance, add localization, and there's add MVC. So I'm gonna add MVC, which, and it is a method, so I need to put the open and close parentheses. And that's all I need to do in order to add the MVC services to our service collection. Now the final step is to actually plug MVC in as part of our middleware. And we need to think carefully about where we want to plug MVC in at. Remember this run method here, extension method on our app object was really a terminal, which means that it, as soon as it reaches this, uh, this function, it's going to send back a response from this point. So if I put the uh, MVC, if I plugged MVC into the pipeline here, it would never be reached because everything would hit this run method and never reach the MVC method. So I'm going to put it here after our use runtime info page. And I'm just once again going to type in app dot use MVC. And I'm going to use the one that says MVC with default route. Okay, so we're going to do app use MVC with default route, and that's it. Now we have installed MVC into our pipeline. So let's go ahead and save our startup class so that now everything is ready to go. And in the next video, we're gonna talk in depth about what MVC is. And uh, pretty soon here, we're actually going to use MVC in our project.